Part 1. Corporate America. After the financial shenanigans of the stock market bubble, the rife scandals best exemplified by the malfeasance at Enron, WorldCom, and Tyco, the inflated balderdash fed to investors by the so-called research analysts of Wall Street investment bankers, the grotesquely excessive compensation paid to chief executives in cash and in the form of obscene grants of stock options, awards that came at the direct expense of the shareholders, though not even counted as an expense in the company's income statements, and the focus of our stock market on the evanescent prices of stocks rather than the durable intrinsic values of corporations, the idea that companies have been run for the benefit of their managers at the expense of their shareholders is hardly news. But in the first section of this audiobook, I bring into sharp focus not only what went wrong with corporate America, but why it went wrong. Essentially, most of what went wrong can be described as an agency problem characterized by 1. Executive Compensation Driven by mega-grants of stock options, the total pay of the average CEO soared from 42 times that of the average worker in 1980 to 280 times in 2004, a staggering increase unjustified by any remotely comparable business achievement. 2. The onset of quarterly earnings guidance, accompanied by financial engineering designed to produce the promised results and abetted by the attendant laxity in traditional accounting standards. When the investment community demanded and the business community provided the illusion of managed earnings in order to inflate stock prices and enrich insiders, it was only a matter of time until the ensuing market bubble burst. How could these aberrations in corporate America occur? The responsibility lies heavily upon the shoulders of the gatekeepers we trusted to protect investors legislators, regulators, rating services, attorneys, public accountants, and, most importantly, corporate directors, who seemed unable to recognize their responsibility for the stewardship of the corporation in the interest of its owners. They failed to intercede appropriately on behalf of the shareholders. To reform this faltering system, I present a series of recommendations designed to strengthen the independence of the Board of Directors and to bring a semblance of corporate democracy into the system by first enabling and then encouraging investors to exercise their voting franchise, working with company directors to return capitalism to its owners so it can function effectively in the nation's service.